got me. You got me. All pressure came up. Everything else is holding. That's a good start. Mixture and stabilizer trim. Uh, set for takeoff two places. One, two, three, four, five. Going to fingers after this. Uh, avionics. We'll get our weather. Berkeley County Airport. Automated weather observation. One, six, zero, three. Zulu weather. Wind, zero, four, zero. At six, visibility. One, zero. Clear below one two thousand temperature one two Celsius dew point minus three altimeter three zero one six. Entry is connected. Four flight is connected. Park and brake. We're not using that. I feel my tow brakes for now. Positive control system is there, and I felt it earlier. The auto instruments are all working. Fuel selector valve. Burn off the left tank. That's what I want. We're ready for run up. We're gonna do that when we get down there. We got a long taxi today. And Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey on the ramp, taxi out to runway 5, Berkeley County. So, we're meeting my buddy Lee up in the air today. He's giving me a ride back. Because um, today, we are dropping my airplane off to have a pre-buy inspection. Yeah, and then we're going to do a little formation flying, hopefully, on the way there. And have a good time. But the focus of today's video is another... Um, lesson learned in flying, I guess. So this whole like playlist on, on YouTube that I'm putting all these videos under is called Learning to Fly. Right? I'm, I'm over 350 hours now, like 350, 360 hours of flying in just over a year and a half. Um, but I'm still very much a novice, um, obviously, right? 350 hours is not much. Um, although I do fly often, um, and when, I, when I'm not flying, I'm studying flying. When I'm not studying flying, I'm thinking about it. I'm talking about it. It's I'm actually probably anymore a pretty boring person to hang out with because I don't really care about anything else except flying. So if the conversation is not about airplanes or flying, I don't really have much to say about it anymore, and I um, I realize that about myself. But anyway, it just just is telling you that I'm not I'm not casual about it. I I'm very serious about it. I don't I don't skip checklists. I I understand the risk, and when I say I study aviation, I also study aviation accidents and incidents. And one thing you see a lot, I mean, you see a lot of student pilots, you see a lot of low-time pilots dying, things like that, but you also occasionally see extremely experienced pilots go down. Um, Dale Snodgrass was one a couple years ago. That one bothered me because, um, you know, one of the best pilots in the world, and he made a stupid mistake and left the gust lock in when he took off. Um, that was the end of that. Um, it, it, that's just one example. You guys see it all the time. Uh, people get complacent, and I'm really, I'm, I try very, very, very hard not to let that happen to me. That being said, I'm in my instruments training. In instrument training, I haven't been filming that because it's been we've been doing like an accelerated instrument course, and it's been very um, demanding. So I've not been I've not been filming it. Plus, um, it just it's not that exciting to film. It, it, does, it doesn't really make good content. I'll, I'll tell a story in the air. I'll tell you what happened. Um, but I made I made a really stupid mistake. It ended up costing me money. Um, but luckily, that's all it was. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that story when you get in the air. But here we are at runway five. Let's get our run-up done. Nice, easy stop. Everything's still looking good. We're going to bring the mixture in, bring the prop, or excuse me, the throttle up. Uh, until we see about 1,700 RPM. There it is. RPM's holding. Fuel pressures are holding. Suction's good. Everything is in the green down here. Going two left. Two right. One left. One right. Left, right, mag, prop, 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 and throttle. Good. Before inch takeoff, like controls. Three and correct. Flaps one. Mixture's full already. Uh, landing light, seatbelts, door is closed, window is coming closed. We're going to need a little bit of air, so we'll get that open. Get that open. Uh, and expect the engine to die and take off when it does find, push forward, find a place to land immediately. And Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey taking off runway 5, Berkeley County. Okay, strobe and fuel pump coming on. Final's clear, there's birds everywhere, so need to be really careful of that. Pressures are good, RPM are good. Engine instruments in the green. Rotation speed. Got a bird right in front of us. Gears coming up. Gears up. Flaps coming up. Berkeley County traffic Mooney 2711 Whiskey is left crosswind. Runway 5. We're departing off the crosswind, headed out to the lake. Last call for a while, Berkeley County. So yeah, this story now. Um, doing my instrument training. It's at the end of day three. We did a lot of it. Well, I'll give you just a real quick update on the instrument training, how that's been going. Landing light, 
Electric fuel pump coming off. Everything there looks good. We're good for that. There's 1700 for 2500 So the instrument training's been going very, very well. I like my instructor. That's the key. Um, but um, the feedback I've gotten from him is really all good. And that's kind of, I mean, I was ex not expecting that, but I was. that's what I was hoping for. Right? I didn't want to, I wanted to be almost ready um, or, you know, mostly ready and then have an instructor to fill in the gaps. That's That was the goal of my training, and that's the way it was. The feedback I got was watch my altitude, which that's that's all, That's all. everyone's issue, right? You really need to be careful of those minimums. So I got to burn it in my brain, give myself that 100-foot buffer between my minimums um, and, and just watch my altitude. So I got to be careful of that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay, but that's just that's the one critique, right? So instrument training was going very well. I have one more day of instrument training. I'm waiting to do the final day until I get rid of this plane and get into the new airplane. So I want to put a few hours on the new airplane before I go take a check ride in it, right? I don't want to be, you know, learning the equipment while I'm taking my check ride. So I want to have my instructor come back down in a couple of weeks, do one more day of, of heavy instrument training in the new airplane, um, and then I'll, have, I'll do my check ride right after that. So that's where I'm at with instrument training. Here's 2,500 feet. We're going to come way back. 19 inches. We're not trying to impress anybody today. 2,400 RPM and leaner way out. If we're monitoring. We're listening for my buddy Lee. He'll be on fingers when he gets over here. Fingers is 1, 2, 3.45. But on the last day of my instrument training, the last, not the last day, the last day we were training, we were flying the RNAV Alpha into KPHH over here, which is Robert Sweeney Airport, right? It's a small little airport. They have a GPS approach into one runway, and then you circle to land on the other runway if you want the other one. There's no GPS approach into the other side. On this day, it was downwind. You fly the approach to the downwind runway, just so happened to be downwind, and then if you want to land the other one again, you circle to land on that runway. So I knew I was flying downwind, right? I had the foggles on, these guys here, so can't see nothing out of them. And we get to the, the VDP, and my instructor says, okay, go your visual. So I take off my foggles and I look at the windsock and I see, okay, it's, we are downwind, but I think I, we're still good just to land, right? I had to pee. I was getting lazy. That was dumb decision number one. I, you know, and I, I had a lot of time. I, it wasn't like I had to decide right there. I looked at the windsock and contemplated it back and forth. I was like, oh, we could just land this way. It's a decently long runway. I, I'm really comfortable with the landing performance of this airplane. I, I, I'm not worried about it. Poor decision. I get over the runway, and I'm floating a little bit too long. I had a little bit too much speed coming in, and that's very important. You guys know in the Mooney, you want 80 miles an hour over the threshold. That's it. 85 is too much. 90 is way too much. Um, and I think I was about 85 because I was a little bit high coming from MDA. And I was fast. So I go to, you know, plane out over the runway, and get, I'm trying to let it settle, and it's not settling. And I knew it was because I was fast. So I ate up a bunch of the runway. Then when I finally touched down, I didn't have a lot of runway left, so I was I went on the brakes too hard. And in the Mooney, it's a you know low wing aircraft, so did the ground effect. I don't know if it's like this is all low wing aircraft, but the ground effect in this Mooney, you can't you can't get on the brakes really hard, especially while you're waiting for the flaps to come up. So um, we're waiting for the flaps to come up, and they come up slow. I was on the brakes, and I thought I had no brakes. I went for the brakes, and I just felt nothing. So I'm just sliding, but I didn't know I was sliding. I thought I lost my brakes, so next thing my mind went to is, okay, where am I going? I was like, okay, there's a lot of grass after this runway. We're not going that fast. We're taking it into the grass. I'm going to overrun the runway and go into the grass and whatever. We're going to be fine. We're going to live. There'll probably be some damage to the plane, we're gonna be, but we're going to be okay. That's what I'm thinking. Then, this all happens in like, I don't know, five, ten seconds in my brain. Then my brain goes to chill out on the brakes. You're probably sliding. Let up on the brakes. I feel it grab again, and then I get on the brakes, and we come to a stop by the end of the runway. Uh, but we slid hundreds of feet down that freaking runway, man. Hundreds of feet. Um, it went, it all happened so fast. And I destroyed my tires. I think another 20, 30 feet and I was through the tires. Um, and these tires were a year old too, which really bums me out. I thought about not even sharing the story because it's, it's just super embarrassing. Like, what the hell am I thinking? I hate th this, this kind of thing in aviation because I've always said this. This time it's tires. But when is it going to be something that is uh, not tires and more of a, like a, a dumb decision that leads to a much worse outcome? And I always think about that. Um, I don't think I'm any, I'm not above that happening. I don't think anybody is, obviously, um, but really dumb. So looking back on it, 
Obviously, I should have stuck to the plan. I should have not landed downwind. Just don't do that. Why? There's never a, a reason to do that. I was tired from IFR flying all that day. And that day, I, I even told my instructor, I was like, man, if we were not training today, I would not be flying. I just, I was tired from work. I had a stressful day aside from that. And I was like, I'm not in the right mindset. So had I not been training and not had been on the schedule for that, I would have not, not flown. I would have just said, screw it. But I flew that day, and uh, so my mind was already shitty. Um, but yeah, stick to the plan. Don't land Tom Wind, Tom, idiot. And then I had a chance to go around. When I was over the runway and I was just floating, I should have just crammed it and said, nope, nope, I'm not landing. So just a series of the shitty decisions that led to almost, you know, a really big deal. And, it, you know, pretty embarrassing. Luckily, I mean, I don't even know what it's going to cost me. I haven't gotten the bill yet, but tires are like 120 bucks a pop. I went to my mechanic the next day. I was like, hey got room in your hangar in a, in a set of uh, 606 tires? He's like, yep. And uh, I just swapped them out the, the very next day. So I was lucky in that respect, I guess. But man, oh man, was that just a, a shitty decision and an embarrassing one, to be honest with you. But instead of just learning this lesson, like don't land downwind, obviously, I look at it in a broader sense and say, don't, don't add any risk you don't have to add. That's, that's kind of what I got out of this. Like, landing downwind, even though everything else is perfect, that it just it reduces your margins by that much. So you always want to stack the deck in your favor as much as possible, and I didn't do that this day. Because you never know when one, two, three, or however many things are going to go wrong. Like, I'm landing downwind. What if I did lose my brakes? You know what I'm saying? What, what if that was the case? If I had been landing into the wind, maybe I could have stopped before the end of the runway. Most of the time, I don't have to use brakes on landing. Because you land slow enough in this airplane that you can just roll it out to the end and you just tap the brakes a little bit at the end and turn off the runway. So I'm done with that kind of shit, you know. I, I, I say that. I, I hope I hope um, I can be a little smarter in the future. Another thing, too, I was thinking, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously obviously I had to replace the damn tires. One, because once the cord starts to show, they're not legal anymore. you got to get them replaced. And two, I can't just hand this plane to that to the guy, oh, eh. There you go, it needs tires, like, that'd be a total dick move, so, at least he gets brand new, fresh tires, they're gonna have, like, you know, ten landings on them, or whatever, um, but, just, just a dumb, what do you think in moment, man, but yeah, aside from that, man, my instrument training, I'll tell you, that is, it's exhausting, I was so excited to fly VFR the other day, and look out the damn window, it is a totally different experience, when you don't see out the window, just flying in general, like, actual IFR, I get satisfaction out of, I get, like, serious satisfaction on a flying an actual IMC and, like, accomplishing that mission. But under the foggles, man, it is just exhausting and not that fun. It's it's a lot of work, especially in a complex aircraft like this. Um, when you take off and you put the foggles on, and, um, it's a, there's, a, there's a ton to do. You've got to manage the engine. You've got to stay on course, um, watch your needles, watch your out, watch your out, everything. Switches, there's so much to do. Checklists. It is a lot of work, but it's really good. I like that. I like that kind of that hard work, and it, it's satisfying afterwards. I'm explaining this terribly, but um, you get the point. It's 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 really satisfying learning this. And we did get to do some actual IMC on the on the first day of training. It was it was gnarly, man. We we flew in some some rain and um, some clouds, and we flew back at night. And we had this little layer of clouds we had we had to descend through. It was actually beautiful, um, yeah, and it was good, man. I felt I felt really comfortable. I never felt like I was out of control. Like I was glad my instructor Sam was there, but I was saying if he hadn't been there, I would have still been fine that day. That's not to say that I can do it. It's just to say that day when we were doing it, he didn't have to take the controls at all. That being said, flying IFR, I will always prefer to do that with two pilots. And I will not be doing it until I have a very, very good autopilot with my family in the plane. It's just not worth it. I mean, little ascents or descents through scattered layers, maybe. But, you know, flying in, in, in rain and all that shit, not happening. Not with my kids. Uh, because it's just, it's too much stress. Flying via bar is stressful. Uh, but flying with your family and kids and added responsibility, you know, because in my brain I'm thinking about that. Lee, is that you on fingers? Yeah, hey, buddy. What's up, buddy? Where you at? Oh, never mind, I see you. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was measuring it from 8 miles to your south. You got me on ADSC, I can see you. I got you. 
All right, I'm going to turn towards you and we'll just link up and head out to Daniel. Sounds good. Uh, what altitude do you want to go with west 45? Yeah, 45 works. I'll be up there in a minute. That's good. I don't even know what I was talking about at this point, but it doesn't matter because we got another Mooney inbound and that's cool. that is that uh, one one whiskey is delivered for the pre-buy hopefully that goes all right and there are no issues nothing major that pops up on the pre-buy don't suspect there will be but if it goes well then we'll got to figure out how he's gonna either come get the plane or I'm gonna fly it up there I don't know what's gonna happen so we got all that to figure out still so stay tuned to see what goes on with that and stay tuned to check out the new airplane um, hopefully coming soon so if you guys like this don't forget to like and subscribe you can follow me on Instagram all that jazz and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.